Colorado Public Radio, welcome to Terra Firma. Hello, friends. I'm C. Marie Furman. Come with me on this journey as we listen for insights from the natural world. This time to the mountains of West Central Idaho. It is morning at my cabin in the Salmon River Mountains. The young dog is asleep on the couch. The old one wanders the living room looking for a sunbeam to sleep in. Outside, a cowbird whistles and the breeze sufts the pines. The trees unclench green fists and open their palms to accept first light. I watch as the crowns of firs turn gold. The wild hyacinth bathes in sunlight. It's next to a stump that caught fire last spring. Though the stump's roots burn beneath the soil for days, it is still strong enough to hold the disk of water we placed there for the bird people. Spring mornings like this are filled with opportunity. And this morning, as I pour seed in the feeder, I use this opportunity to consider my place in this landscape. I look at the land that has been the backdrop of my life for over a decade. Spirea are making their plans for summer pink blossoms. A spider vibrates in her web and shakes loose the dew. Bird song pauses as the sun lifts from the horizon, and together we witness the miracle of another day. I believe my place is in noticing, in celebrating, in offering gratitude. I am told that were I not here, the strawberry that grows along the path would bloom more passionately. The trillium, whose blooms already aged and fell, would still move toward the light, seek water, host whomever lands on the long leaves that the deer, who stare at me now, will nibble. And though it may not matter that I am here, I am. So I meet the eyes of the doe, who, now acknowledged, returns to her grazing. I greet her and the forest with words born of this landscape. Tats me we, we me him. I say in the Nez Perce that her ancestors knew. And I thank the landscape in the same language. Kutsi out yell. And feel a beautiful shift as subtle as the breeze in pine, as easy as a child's smile. Some might say I am wrong, projecting, human imposing. They might say that trillium and alder and birdsong don't need me here. It has been said that this earth would thrive if my species were gone entirely. I could, I suppose, ignore the arnica that only opened along the driveway yesterday and assume they would have bloomed anyway. I could stop apologizing to Robin, whose song I interrupt when filling the feeders, and stop filling the feeders as well. Maybe the loss would be neither theirs nor mine if I stopped greeting the morning and the jays. Would the spirea notice me gone? Would the thrush still sing her dusk song? Would the forget-me-nots not care that they had been forgotten? The thought ignites a sense of loneliness. 
Species loneliness, Robin Wall Kimmerer calls it. How lonely the earth must be for the press of our bodies against it. Do the stars feel forsaken with no lovers to lie beneath them? Does the planet yearn to hear songs once sung by all our ancestors? Songs for rain and for salmon. Don't our own dogs respond with wags and glee when we speak their names and whisper, Good dog. The same life which responds in kind to me in my kin must live in the spider, the wild strawberry, the throaty gross beak song. So call this ceremony respect, or call it reciprocity, or just the need to show the same generosity toward kin that moves me. Tats may we, I say again, good morning. And though I will hear again that this place might be better without humankind, I will continue to practice my place in the world. Though some might say this planet doesn't need you and me, I believe it does. You might too, when you turn your attention and your heart to the wild. I'm C. Marie Furman. This field recording was gathered by Jacob Job. Terra Firma is a production of Colorado Public Radio.